Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday, where we sit back, relax, talk about the fun things that we found going on in the world of Linux. I am Vin, that is Jill, and that is one Pedro mm -hmm. Mateus, and with you joining Hello. us live, we're going to try to have a good time and see what is up. Speaking mm -hmm. of what's up, what's going on, everyone? Pedro, have you got those boots yet? I've been dying, dying to know. <laughs> no, uh, well, I've been dying to get myself a pair, but no, not yet, because uh, Solovar is like, uh, we have the 10.5s in stock now. Yeah. <laughs> Nine, please. Just UK size nine, please. Please. No. I'm still there. You can have my boots. They're too special. <laughs> Yay. I hope you get them, man. Uh, well, you'll eventually yeah. get them. Patience. Patience. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> my favorite thing, which is going to be horrible, is you're going to be an agony the first week and a half to two weeks oh breaking those that, boots in <laughs> that's acceptable i got blisters all under my feet when i first moved here because i was walking all over the place it's gonna be brilliant so. i've been saving up to hire people to chase you to work <laughs> because i'm a monster okay. jill what's, up, what's new with you oh um uh, had a great time on Linux Gamecast Weekly Saturday, filling in for What's Jordan. That? Never heard of it. <laughs> That's our our big uh, Saturday show with the Linux news reviews and whatever the hell elks you come up with. Language. <laughs> I, I I said elks. <laughs> Yeah, it was the hell before that, Joe. Oh, oh, okay. Womp, womp. <laughs> you corrupted me. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Blame it on us now. <laughs> so over here, man, uh, I've basically come to the conclusion. I've been looking around for... Um, kind of like a it's, a... it's more of a challenge at this point. I want to know... Because with DaVinci Resolve, the software we use for editing, they have a light version. It works perfectly well. I want to get the pro version, kind of speed things up. And on eBay, they have dongles. They don't do the dong. I get to say dongles legitimately, too. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> no, no, right. <laughs> Rare occasion. I do that at work a lot, <laughs> specifically for that reason. <laughs> but they made dongles, giggity, uh, right up to version 15. And they're future compatible, too. But... Piracy is rampant with hardware dongles for DaVinci. Okay, pro tip to no. everyone. If you see 150 bucks, that's the going price for ones that are not legitimate, which will not work with the DaVinci Resolve 16. Uh, I was even down to the point last night. I thought I found one to put up for $179. I'm trying to save a little bit of money. Like the mm -hmm. actual keys is going to be like 300 bucks. Not a bad price whatsoever. I'm going to save money where we can. And he's like, I got a copy of 15 says copy of, and it was in the box and he's like with a dongle and i message him i was like yo man i'll give you that uh but is that legitimate and he's like i'm pretty sure it's legitimate i mean i know it works with 15 and i was like well could you try it with 16 mm. he's like yeah i don't have access to a computer uh-huh right uh -huh. Oh. and and what killed me is this was like a long-term ebay seller with great feedback too so buyer b where i just wanted to throw yeah. that out there yeah don't get stuck with something but you know such as ebay hey let's get right into it a uh, couple of things hey another thing we get to say non-ironically 69 and the terms of yeah. firefox yeah so firefox 69 has been released with several major new security and privacy features including enhanced tracking protection will be turned on by default and this default standard setting for and the default standard setting for enhanced tracking protection now blocks third-party tracking cookies and crypto miners. Awesome. Also, there is a new support for receiving multiple video codecs, which makes it a lot easier for web RTC conferencing services to mix video from different clients. And I'm hoping that this will go a long way to improving web RTC performance in Firefox. We definitely need that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. <laughs> what we need. Um, this might be very like podcasting narrow laser beam, I think, is the option to get rid of that stupid little thing in the middle when you go full screen. Yeah. Oh, see, that would yeah. be very helpful because there used to be a flag you disabled and it would go away. But mm -hmm. Firefox said, no, 
that that's mm-hmm. going on and it's staying on. <laughs> we don't want you to use our product for podcasting. Clearly. No. <laughs> and that's very unfortunate. I intellectually I understand. I can roll back and be like, I get it, because then you could disable it it man, all right. Mozilla, if somebody's gonna be that trouble, they're just gonna use Chrome. Because Chrome oh, yeah. right. Um, yeah. <laughs> Give me nuclear launch codes, man. Let me jump through six hoops and I will use Firefox because I can build Firefox with Jack support. Uh, what I'm really happy to see with this is blocking all the autoplay videos. I'm looking at you, ZDNet. Took them long mm. enough. <laughs> yeah. Dude, um, it's not the autoplay. Again, looking at you, ZDNet. It's the autoplay videos that have nothing to do with what you're trying to read. They're like, hey, there's a couple of gaming sites that do the same thing, too. Man, I will (laughs) no script that site so quick. And this, and you might be thinking, hey, didn't they have something like that in one of the Chrome betas way back when? Not really way back when, maybe earlier Mm. this year. They Mm. did, but they decided against rolling it out because, hey, man, we can, those are ads and we're Chrome. Yeah, ads autoplay. So if all of a sudden you're autoplaying media, those ads aren't going to roll. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little unfortunate. Um, looking forward to trying it out on possibly, I don't know, man. I'm running Firefox ESR right now because mm-hmm. Debian did. Yeah, Debian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully in the next decade, I'll take a crack at it. And... <laughs> you can enable PPAs in Debian, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just download the tar.gz okay. okay. Firefox, then. <laughs> that works. You don't have to. I'm just saying that you can. It's a possibility. It's there. <laughs> this is what I work with. <laughs> All right. Up next, Thunder Chicken. Mm-hmm. We get a little bit of this. Uh, not 69, but 68.0. A couple of new things. The ones I'm interested in. It's got a better dark theme. That's very mm-hmm. much welcome. Thank you for that. I'm quite excited. And you now have a color wheel. That's right. You can go full metal rainbows in your correspondence with other people. You know, if you think like the gimp, that little circle thing you can drag around. And one thing mm-hmm. that I didn't see in here, a couple of things, preferences with tabs, new menus. Here's the full color support wheel. That's kind of brilliant. And there's that beautiful dark theme. Because if you tried to use dark themes with Thunderbirds, man, it's a carp shoot. 100%, because yeah. there's a lot of times <laughs> yeah. like, well, that just became completely unusable and unreadable. And attachment yes. management, which <laughs> you should, don't send attachments to people. But mm-hmm. I didn't see anything from performance. Maybe, uh, I'll ask you, Pedro. Like, the, there's two apps, and in all fairness, this is like I have a 12-core CPU and an NVMe drive, a fast <laughs> one at that. <laughs> two applications under Linux that don't open... First world problems incoming, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Don't open by the time I've released the micro switch on my mouse. And that's Steam and that's Thunderbird. Uh, yes. And Gimp. <laughs> yeah. Gimp's Gimp gotten better, a bit though. of the load. <laughs> <laughs> 12 core thread rip. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah but it still does lo- it shows that little pop-up with the loading bar it's usually yes. just it shows it, it fills and it, yeah <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the, the, those are very much like uh, Thunderbird and um, Steam, especially if you have like six different email inboxes set up in Thunderbird. It's mm-hmm. slow. It is it's a bit slow. slow. <laughs> but what actually surprised me with this release is that it came from Mozilla. And I remember Mozilla not too long ago saying, yeah, the Thunder Chicken needs new <laughs> home. So we um, were kind of, you know, willing to surrender the code and let someone take care of it. And I'm guessing the Document Foundation and everyone else that may have been interested looked at it and said, nope. Well, <laughs> to their credit. But, <laughs> Good point, Pedro. <laughs> Somebody's still got to work on it. It's an important piece. Um, I feel like if you're actually having to deal with email, webmail doesn't cut it. Just doesn't. No, 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 no. You need yeah. a dedicated client, especially if you have six Multiple, different right. uh, boxes uh, from different providers. Yeah. It's you got to have that centralized client. Exactly. It's one of the first things yeah. that get installed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I absolutely love the new app menu. Um, what's really nice about it is all the functions are contained in one panel now, and it's so much cleaner and neater than having multiple submenus to scroll through. That was always a bit annoying. And so it's, it's but it's nice to have 
having a refreshed Thunderbird user, user interface because the interface was looking a bit stale and dated. So it was about Ooh. time. It, it needed it. But it, it, you know, it was always really theme. functional, but yeah, it is better. The default <laughs> theme st is still the same, but yeah, now you have the option of making it dark. Yeah. Which is yeah, much better. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it. It's a male client. Let's not yeah. gnome it up and turn it into a button. Like a Aww. Button but, oh, but it's still nice to have the app menu, all the functions contained in one menu instead of yeah. going to, you know, I, I just, I preferred that. <laughs> so Okay. Options. <laughs> hey, man, Dell's got a new piece of kit. The XPS 13 developer edition. What's that, man? Does that like unlock any uh, special Linux powers? Yeah. So this month you can get your hands on a new, new Dell XPS 13 Developer Edition 9th generation laptop starting at $899.99. And what's cool is the Dell XPS 13 739, 7390 will include um, Intel Core i5 processor or an i7 uh, 6 core processor. A 13-inch Infinity Edge display with HD and Ultra HD resolutions, up to 16 gigs of RAM, killer 2x2 Wi-Fi, and this updated model will also include two Thunderbolt 3 ports. And that is really, really cool. That's awesome. Uh, you have in the show notes there, it's the LPDDR3. Isn't oh, it DDR4? Yes, yes. Yeah, um... <laughs> Yeah, that well, that was what they said in the article, and I realized it was wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, OMG Ubuntu, check your stuff. Uh, the yeah. The thing that I honestly really don't care about mm -hmm. as someone who used uh, an XPS thirteen, the ninety three sixty, for a couple, good couple of months, uh, the touch screen doesn't really do anything for me. Honestly, I. I just got mm. really annoyed whenever someone started using the touchscreen screen slap. Everybody uh, now I'm going they... to have to wipe that. <laughs> Everyone thinks they want a touch screen laptop until you use it. And you're like, oh, no, <laughs> nope, nope. But yeah, I'd be really happy. Uh, also, this is the, uh, the 7390 is the two in one model, uh, which means it does the whole flip around, become a tablet type of thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm really not, down with the whole touchscreen thing, but I totally wouldn't mind one without the uh, touchscreen and the uh, 1080p matte display because I had a look at the pictures and the black model. It looks amazing. Mm -hmm. I'd be very happy with Beautiful. that. I'd be happy with the uh, 9380 <laughs> in black as well. It's just, give me. <laughs> <laughs> That's neat. Dell makes some solid yeah. kit. Uh, it's a laptop, so in my professional opinion, don't care. Um, <laughs> Aww. Up next, hyperfine. Up next, not double fine. We can uh, well, yeah. well, we can take all the guesswork uh, and knowing uh, in knowing exactly how long a command took to run by using hyperfine, and it is basically you just feed it a command. And you can tell it to warm up, to pre-run the command a couple of times to, so like, cache everything. You can set it to completely ignore the cache and just do a cold run. You can um, feed it a bunch of parameters for it to run specific runs at specific times. And it gives you the time uh, that a command took to run. It gives you an estimate uh, ETA. Uh, and it gives you, well, yeah, it gives you a progress bar. Which I was looking at, it's like, oh, this would be really handy for those distros out there that when you run DD, uh, the dash dash show progress bar is not an option. So let's, uh, it's, um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, you just feed it literally any command that usually doesn't have a progress bar, like a copy, a CP or a, an MV, literally anything. And it will give you that progress bar and will give you the time to like the 0.1 of a millise uh, millisecond of how long it took to run. So that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it, it worked uh, beautifully and it was very, very accurate. I first ran the, the cat command and of course it was under five milliseconds. And then HTOP. Um, which was pr still pretty fast, but Inksy, if, if anyone out there uses Inksy, um, like uh, launching uh, Thunderbird or Steam, sometimes it can take a second. 
But after it gets going, after like 10 cycles, then it's much faster. But Inksy takes yeah. a while too. <laughs> Interesting way to kind of automate a little bit too, because it'll give you your yeah. performance yeah. results. <laughs> On, I, can you, is there anything you can feed it? I mean, you can feed it fine grab or anything like that. And yeah. You can feed it literally anything. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Oh, oh, I used it. I also used it to launch Steam <laughs> to see how long that took. <laughs> yes, you can see exactly how long it takes Steam to start up. Although you yeah. might want to uh, like put some uh, quotes around it and feed the Steam output into Dev Null so you don't get like the jumble uh, of messages. You yes. Do that. Or, yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, let, we could do the RN command, but we only get one shot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you yes. get a progress bar, and then you see what happens. <laughs> You, know, you can get away with a lot, man, because I've straight up swapped out kernels, like, then did a reboot that I was running that kernel. is like, don't do that. And it's like, trust me on this one. I've done it. A <laughs> Never getting bit yet. It'll happen next time. Hey, we're talking about the command line. So let's kind of bring up a solution to a mm. problem that's already been fixed. <laughs> but last week, uh, NPM man, some ads showed up. People rightfully lost their minds man so now we have no cli ads it's like extra protection for npm so you don't get spam advertisements when you're installing a tiny little package that needs four gigs of dependencies so there it is it's open source hopefully we'll never have to use it because um <laughs> NPM yeah. has banned <laughs> terminal ads javascript community's <laughs> negative reaction <laughs> rightfully so recent Experiment kills potential avenue for funding open source projects. Yay. Action, reaction. 100% mm -hmm. adds at runtime or installation. Big honking no no now. Don't even think about it. Don't do it. You'll get nuked from orbit. However, <laughs> you can still have packages that can be used to display ads for a program or something like that. That's completely within the scope of possibility. And I'm glad they nuked this from Orbin, like immediately and with a quickness before things went to complete nope. And that would have happened. We know that would have happened. Oh, and yeah, yeah like we were using people mentioned like, whoa, what's this? And like, oh, this is not good. <laughs> no. And yeah. it's like, uh, I saw the uh, thing about no CLI ads in the show. It's like, what's this about? Oh, NPM. Oh, of course they have uh, ads when you yes. install something now. Uh, and then I, I was looking on my phone and I saw like one of the Google notifications about the news. It's like NPM developers ban, um, terminal ads. Like, huh, <laughs> the plot thickens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was, you know, I was happy that, um, Ubu Kadaje, the main developer listened to the community. Uh, that was really, really good on his part. And um, also that Linode and LogRocket bowed out as well because they wanted to use it as a form of, of uh, advertising as well. <laughs> well, it does boil back to, you know, a conversation that we don't really have time to cover, but it's trying to find a way to monetize free yeah. software. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a yes. difficult task. So, yeah. And that's not really... It's, it's not not a good way to do it. No, <laughs> no. If you're if you're targeting people who are installing, who are using your tool for the the purpose that you designed it for, and you're actively targeting them to monetize yourself, it's a bit scummy. A little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You could have like a big pop up screen, man. Come on, increase this. We could. <laughs> Hi, Microsoft. How you doing? <laughs> Don't give them ideas, you monster. Let's talk about some geeky stuff, man. Yes, yeah, specifically the no maps. So you probably have seen the news that uh, next week or close to uh, GNOME 334 will be coming out. And so there's a bunch of news surrounding everything that constitutes like a no map. Uh, everything, every single one of them is getting a bit of an update, be it just a GTK integration or in the case of no maps, basically getting it up and running to a point where I would say it's like, yes, if I had to use no maps, that is pretty much use it. It's useful. So yeah, yeah it is currently it's, um, it's using the map box API, uh, with the open street maps. Uh, so you may remember a while back, uh, I think Strider was still on the show 
when we talked about it because they ran into a bit of an issue with the previous map provider so they shifted to using um open street maps and it's awesome to see that it works as well as it does and yeah next week we'll have the full gnome 334 so i very much look forward to that how about you jill yeah oh definitely <laughs> and though although i haven't used no maps all that much it is nice to have a local map viewer as part of gnome that is a launchable app uh with within yeah. the uh, distro and one that points to open street map when needed that's awesome i i actually use open street map a lot as an alternative to Google Maps. And I definitely will now pay more attention to no maps, which is implementing lots of Google Map functions now, which is really awesome. Because I, I remember yeah. when I looked at it, when it was first starting, there was there, it didn't do a lot. <laughs> so. Well, they threw you know, a couple of features with this. Um, one, which is like, oh, well then, that makes things useful, is <laughs> it comes back. I mean, it will open the last location that you were at. Which, yeah. Hey, I'm glad that's the thing. Uh, they implemented support for opening URLs, pointing to objects, and open street map directly. So if you like wooden chats or anything like that, that'll help out. Huge fan of this. I always think about when I read this is I use a gang of GNOME software, even though I have nothing but seething mm -hmm. rage. And I don't. I pretend, you know, because it's <laughs> funny to pick yeah. on it. I, if you get upset over desktop managers, Get help. Um, mm -hmm. I don't use the desktop manager, but, you know, tons of GNOME software, like GNOME Disk. Is that daily? Not hopefully mm -hmm. not daily. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> GNOME System Monitor, big fan of that. GNOME Calculator. Mm -hmm. Don't know why. There's a billion calculators, but I always install my GNOME Calculator. Calculator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Calculator. <laughs> um, but, yeah, man, that's definitely a thing. Good on that. Pedro, you made something happen that I couldn't get to work. Uh, mm -hmm. Did I? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> because it was just, uh, yeah, no, I saw the uh, the Geek Bench uh, link Geek? in the show notes. Geek Bench. <laughs> Geek, Geek, Geek Bench. Geek We're gonna give this a quick mention because it's up to version five. It's out. It's available on Linux. And Pedro, it includes GPU compute benchmarks. It do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you're running on Mac OS, you also get dark mode, but we don't get a, a GUI because we're Linux nerds. <laughs> we're Linux, uh, man. We don't deserve <laughs> <yeah>. that. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh it gives you the option to uh run a it's like seven or eight different tests on your GPU, and you have three different uh compute platforms that you can use. You can use Vulkan, OpenCL, and CUDA. So basically if you're going to try CUDA, I guess you'll need the uh nvidia gpus but do let us know if you can run uh the kudas on uh an amd card or even an intel processor that'd be funny yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i did run the uh i ran it with uh vulcan and i got yeah i got uh that's your five, open five, cl five, score three. and that's with your 1080 <laughs> right yeah that's with my 1080 uh with oh. the 20 compute units here's the 2060 yeah, with 30 compute units and those dedicated tensor cores, which they are very much just compute cores, it makes sense that it would uh, have about 20,000 higher. <laughs> oh, man, that's a lot of extra steps to just say wrecked. <laughs> no, no, that's uh, that's legitimate. That's the 2060 outperforming a 1080. It is a very uh, artificial workload but it it does it's a very artificial mm -hmm. workload that i use um every wednesday and every sunday to render the video <laughs> <laughs> in my I'm talking about the ones Len. i'm talking about the ones that they run yes if you're doing da vinci that will very much use opencl <laughs> actually i can use mm -hmm. Kuda, but close enough Aww. ish <laughs> it is a compute layer technically well i yeah. can I, I have the options for opencl or Kuda just say yeah yeah all right well Jill, i have the ahead. option for yeah. vulcan apparently you don't yeah. no i don't because i'm too cool man i don't i run debian 10 i don't need your hipster vulcan technology unless i'm playing vulcan video games in steam which i do every day man jill mm -hmm. oh well see this is what was cool as a single user license for linux windows and mac os is only um, four dollars and ninety nine cents, but you can actually get all three for seven dollars and forty nine cents, which is really great when you you have if you run all platforms. And um, what's really 
actually really good is the Geekbench 5 Pro version license for commercial use includes command line tools, standalone mode, benchmark configuration and automation, and support. And it's actually on sale now for $49.99. And actually, for those of you out there who don't know, this so- this software can be very, very expensive, like the, the local retailers like um, Office Max and, and Staples. They spend thousands on Geekbench, and, uh, and not Geekbench, but on other uh, benchmarking utilities. So this mm-hmm. is actually a really good price. I was I was happy with it. <laughs> if you're buying software at a brick and mortar store, you deserve to pay any price they put on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you are uh, unless you can haggle real good. Uh, right, the... <laughs> you know that business strategy is like we only got to get one or two a month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> one of the things I noticed uh, that changed from Geekbench 4, which was the one that, well, it was the one that I used a lot to basically run all of the des- uh, the laptops and this desktop to, like, mm. see what kind of overclock or what kind of memory speed makes it the most difference. Uh, basically, all of the CPU scores were divided by 4, because I used to get, like, um, Eight, uh, six thousand something, uh, in a uh, single thread with this 3700X, and about 38,000 and something on multi thread. And I read it again, and it's like hmm. 1100 single thread and 8600 for multi thread. So it's like, where did the rest of the score go? Huh. <laughs> well, this is one of those things I think we were talking about on Saturday where I had a higher performance running in on-demand mode mm-hmm. than I did with performance. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this hmm. is one of those deals. Okay, But fine. yeah, this, this is almost exactly uh, if you divide the old scores, at least in my case, if you divide the scores I by four. everyone at home there would be no maths. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. Aww. I did maths before the show. I need to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that explains the drool. Okay. Um, I don't know where I'm going to go with that. How do you segue in from drool? Hey, well, if, if you would like, like to, to drool uh, all over our fresh, hot new t shirts, uh, <laughs> we have those. If you want to kick a few cycles like that, we got Hell Elks. We got uh, this show, LWDW, the classic. We hey. got mugs and all that. This helps us pay for bandwidth and all the cool stuff that we bring to you each and every week. And that's um, speaking directly to 111 people who make this show possible. Our bosses Yay. Oh, yeah. taking advantage <laughs> of. <laughs> We have a couple of levels with Death Notes. If you want to help us with the shows, you can straight up creep on us, see monsters. They get early access. Well, they get access to the pre-pre super shows, and they can hop in and do all that. Chicago kicks ass. That's just there because Empty wanted it. That's kind of brilliant. <laughs> and we also have executive <laughs> producers, which if you're Yay. like, hey, man, I'd like to be on the show. Hop in an hour before we Pretty go much. live on Saturdays, yeah. and you can <laughs> be on the show, man. That's uh, <laughs> something that we have. Thanks, everybody. Make Mm-hmm. this possible we have a new patreon that we get to think yeah yes, yes. adrian adrian Adrian-an. thank you two ways adrian, adrian- that's An. right it has the two ways <laughs> <laughs> yes if you want to learn two facts about adrian good morning on your saturday <laughs> show pedro um yes yes i mean detective <laughs> pedro Chu, or i don't know <laughs> <laughs> That was funny. <laughs> yeah. um, we have Libra Pay and all that other fun stuff. Everybody keep being awesome. Gang of affiliate links. Uh, what else? Oh, we got Wish Zones because we're like, hey, Jill, uh, you can add stuff to your Wish Zone that'll Give help you zone. with your broadcasting and everything else, uh, you know, to help upgrade your studio set. And Jill put a bunch of plushies. <laughs> Oh, I too. see a 3600 X <laughs> yeah. and a couple of video guards <laughs> and the pink mouse. And a backpack. <laughs> see, the, look, look at my boring ass right here. This is, this is <laughs> my browsing is for keyboards and stuff. Pedro, 3D mice. Well, uh, you can see there's a gaming chair if you'd like me re- yeah. uh, to help me replace this one. <laughs> nope, nope. Nice. <laughs> Nicholas Cage poster. That's kind of brilliant. We got there's fans, one of those. keyboards. <laughs> And something that looks like it squeezes juice down there at the bottom. <laughs> I have a fan. All right, fair enough. I got a fan on mine. Uh, routers, uh, more fans. I like fans. Hey, man, everybody's fan. And as always, we do have the 100% Linux compatible, me tested, Flying Spaghetti Monster approved section. That's on our web zone, linuxgamecast.com. 
anything in the studio that we're currently using that I know for a fact works with Linux yes. is on there. And <laughs> as we always say, go buy it on Newegg if you want. That's I think we get a cut from that, but that's not important. <laughs> we do have <laughs> that one. <laughs> what? We do have that uh, link. If you hover over the relevant section on uh, LinuxGameCast.com, there's... It, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> it's got a brilliant. It's under the about section. It's kind of hot. Yes. <laughs> hey, kids. Let's have a slice of diabetes. I mean, pie. A slice of pie. cartoon pie. Mm. <laughs> Peg leg, which is what you're going to end up with if you try this, the home version. Um, it's a distro, the pirate oh. box platform designed to be measurable and run on hardware small enough to wait for it. You guessed it. Implant the human body. Inspired by pirate radio and amputee. No, I don't know, man. Self contained mobile collaboration file sharing device. Pirate Box utilizes free Libre open source flaws. Images. No, this is a Raspberry <laughs> Pi W. And they walk through putting this in. And I'm not, I'm uh. not, you can go in the show notes and <laughs> clicky poo all over that because there's yeah. images of. Homeboy getting it inserted it in his, into his thigh meats. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that, man, because no. my first thought, and, and if we're looking at it, like, okay, th this is clearly a W that has what appears to be some inert goo over it, and it's got wireless charging on it, so it's got a big inductor <laughs> coil on the mm -hmm. other side that you can't see. <laughs> and you're going to put that and you like meats. And my first thought mm. was, what happens when somebody kicks you there? And that thing snaps and mm. starts <laughs> leaching all that lovely, happy fun juice. No, well, not necessarily. Well, still, it's going to mix silicon and nope. Uh. Uh, not to mention that you're going to have to carry one of those uh, wireless power uh, feeders in your pocket all the time, yeah. pointed directly uh -uh. at your muscle. I'm just going to put a chi mat on the floor and rub on it. <laughs> and, uh, it's like, do you want cancer? Because yes. that's how you get cancer. <laughs> As someone who just ordered a Wi-Fi keyboard, man, the hand cancers, I look forward to. Dude. But that's power. Oh, it's it's man. power. Wireless power. I, I, I get it. The need. <laughs> Ish, I, I can't really... Okay, do... Um, <laughs> You just think about this. I get a little edgy, but I, I got a lot of implants in my body and they're not like Deus Ex stuff. It's like hold me together. It's like it's even mis mismatched, man. They didn't put this arm back together properly. Um, most of mine are made out of titanium and I worry about stuff like this. I have yeah. an artificial knee. I worry about hitting that thing because usually people are old when they get one. So they're like, mm -hmm. yeah, it'll outlive you. Not in my case. Those things would have to be replaced <laughs> if I stick around too much longer. So, yeah, mm. having something like that floating around, uh-uh. Nope. Maybe, all right, yeah. maybe inside my <laughs> rib cage. Maybe. Yeah. Well, that thing's uh, bigger than a pacemaker. No. <laughs> Dude, I lovingly punch people in their sternum. <laughs> because I know that's like a reasonably safe place not to kill them. <laughs> Unless it's already fractured. <laughs> then you apologize a little bit. It's like, I buy him an ice sorry. cream. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're taking him to the ER. But anyway, so what were we said? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's okay. That was, it's actually bigger than a pacemaker. I, I, I'm i going to have to have one of those installed at some point. And that's bigger than the pacemaker. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that just kind of the, freaks me out. <laughs> the idea of sending wireless power is the thing that's actually hitting the note button for me. It's like, no. Yeah. I know. It's like, I run know. a teeny tiny little USB cable out of your skin <laughs> if you have to. Not wireless. <laughs> yeah, because you yeah. need something that's going to be a constant source of irritation and infection. For your <laughs> yeah, brilliant. But it's somewhere that it doesn't... You know. you, you, you've watched too much Star Trek, son. It don't worry. Oh. It's coming up next. <laughs> yeah, so this is Keyboard Pi. Uh, because it is quite hard to get a mobile Linux handheld device in 2019, you either have to build one to get your hands on a discontinued... Uh, you either have to build one or get your hands on a discontinued obscure one, such as the Pocket Chip, which I have right here. <laughs> Yay! And um, so... 
This DIY Linux handheld build is based on Anthony D. Garalamo's design and keyboard hi- and a hyperpixel handheld and teensy thumb board. Yep, that's and a teensy the, thumb. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and the following parts. <laughs> so obviously it's got the, the hyperpixel screen, which is a four-inch touchscreen. It's got a Raspberry Pi Model 3B+. Plus. And a really cool 3D printed retro looking case and frame and full 60 keys QWERTY keyboard controlled by a teensy 3.2 perfect for programming and using the command line and Mm -hmm. a 5,000 milliamp battery regulated by Adafruit power boost and three usable USB and Ethernet ports. So it looks to be a good one. (laughs) How how many blocks of 30 minutes would would you play with this? Go, that's neat, and never touch it again. (laughs) See, I would very much like to build it, but after it was built, it's like, oh, okay. (laughs) Okay, where's my tablet? (laughs) (laughs) Yep. (laughs) But uh, one of the things that they mentioned is like, okay, these are the things that um, the... um, a keyboard Pi can do that a regular phone can also do and you got the usuals mm-hmm. but then they also get to the the bit where it's like okay things that the raspberry pi handheld cannot do yet but a smartphone can do and they have phone calls sms and data connectivity and it's like wait a second someone made a wan hat for the raspberry pi mm-hmm. and i went looking it's like yes it exists yeah. it has a, a little i think it's a, an lte uh, chip on it and it's got a slot for a sim, so it would just be a uh, would just be a matter of uh, finding the software to hook into the sim to get the SMS and the calls going and the data connectivity. Well, that's that's what the WAN uh, hat already does. Done. <laughs> I am sure by the time you Akira that together, you would actually hit a negative TSA acceptance factor. Nah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Put it inside uh, one of those pie tops, like the laptop shell for the Raspberry Pi. <laughs> the parts bulging out. Like that. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Put a squeaky toy in it. All right. Hey. <laughs> maybe if you're working on something made of us, maybe we got something right, wrong, negative, up, down, left, right, you name it, thoughts, hints, allegations, anything you want to throw our way, we would love to hear from you. And there's an easy way to go about doing that. There mm-hmm. is. It's called a contact uh, form, I suppose. We can call it that. Wow, you can find it. This. <laughs> yes, <laughs> on linuxgamecast.com <laughs> uh, under the cleverly named contact button. And just make sure you pick LWDW for the uh, show that you're sending your feedback to. Otherwise, you might <laughs> end up sending some hate mail to that Saturday show, What Jill Joined Us Last Week. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is the way to do it <laughs> and if uh, you do get a capture take a screenshot let us know <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor guy he looks a bit diseased yes I think Aww. he has the hand, hand cancers <sighs> yeah. that's a cat <laughs> you need a better prescription sweetheart um, <laughs> Coming up first from Jason, uh, fragmentation from Jason. Um, what do we have? On the topic of Linux, fragmentation being a problem. When it comes to security, a good thing, question mark. Everyone not shipping the same library versions, desktop managers and kernels would make it more difficult. In his humble opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, yes, but that's just the security through obscurity uh type of mm-hmm. argument because it's like yeah, yeah. It, it's just you have uh, a bunch of different variations on the same package and yes the operating system usually makes use of the same tools but it's different versions depending on the kind of distro that you're running now like i i guess i could say we're, we're just talking about attack surface yes that, that so makes it that, that much more the attack service up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you, you think there's advantages to... and disadvantages of having like a homogenous like you like window like Microsoft is hell in on Windows 10 is like, oh, if you get an update, you get up, but I don't want it, Microsoft. It won't install mm-hmm. on my system. It's failed three <laughs> times. Don't care. Um <laughs> trying to get everything leveled out. That way, like you're 
attack surface is like nice and smooth as opposed yeah, to... Yeah, it's, it's yeah. always the same. You're targeting the same software, the exact same versions or close to. Uh, with Linux, yeah, especially when it comes to distros that use completely different libraries to do the same thing. Like, instead of glibc, you use the muzzle libc. Uh, instead of... Just just think about, like, the basic kernel. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> if you compile yeah. a kernel, but instead of having everything like the most of the mainstream distro kernels that uh, have the hooks for all the possible uh, user-facing hardware, you compile your own kernel, and all of a sudden, those hooks aren't there, so that's even less surface. So, yeah. <laughs> Jill? Yeah, the, the fact that we're, you know, Linux is diversified, you know, it's exactly to the point of Venn and Pedro, is it makes it harder <laughs> to yep. attack certain areas, because we have so many... Uh, there's so many um, security fallbacks to those mm -hmm. attack areas that that are developed by you know thousands of different developers that it actually makes the platform more secure. So that's yep. why it, Linux is considered the most secure operating system in the world because we have that diversity. You know, we have BSD have, would like and, a word with yeah, you. But BSD okay. would tell you to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, well, BSD I guess that's enjoys a thing. your fantasy world. Um, yeah, but for Linux specifically. Yes, Linux yeah. for Linux. Is, okay. <laughs> Circular reasoning there. Um, it, moral of the story: Run Haiku. Um, uh, uh, don't, run don't, haiku. don't, 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 don't. As far as security goes, that's a wide open door. No. Okay. Yeah. How about this? I think SkyOS because I don't think the guy ever finished the network stack. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Because I remember Slash that lost its mind as he was developing it. I'm like, do not name it Skynet. Because like, what should I name the network? <laughs> it was like, no, no. Bad dub. <laughs> Pedro. Well, uh, I guess the last one comes from Laurent. Uh, and they ask, the HDMI audio is almost two seconds out of sync on my Linux PC when plugged into the TV. Rebooting or power cycling the TV fixes it. But it's getting annoying. Ideas? Um, disable any kind of image processing that your TV may be doing. Like, if you have, like, uh, motion smoothing or anything that does any kind of uh, signal processing on the TV, turn it off. If that helps, cool. That's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't help, Try a different HDMI. I don't know. <laughs> Jill, solve the problem. Yeah, I, well, actually, um, I know this is an issue with Samsung TVs in particular because they have some overhead for their embedded OS, and um, this becomes a, a, a problem. Um, I, I another alternative might be to get an HDMI converter and bring in the audio uh, via. via um, no coax. Three and a half mil. It, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. Instead of using the HDMI output, use use a mm -hmm. different output on the audio. Then there's the old man <laughs> then way. <laughs> Son or daughter, open up Pavu Control. Set the delay for two hundred milliseconds. Done. Ah, there you go. <laughs> or if you're bored, 2, you keep cranking it up, maybe. Because it's two <laughs> seconds. <laughs> the 200, is it seconds or milliseconds? Uh, 200 in milliseconds is not 0.2 seconds. So we can argue the little details, but you know what I mean. <laughs> 2,000, <then>. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would... No, it should be like 200 milliseconds. Oh, well, two full seconds... Uh, let me, I'll have to math that back out because I don't know what Pavu control measures. Does it? Anyway. It's usually pretty good on the, uh, like milliseconds being milliseconds yeah, as far as it, the delay translation goes. Anyway, do what I told you <laughs> instead of messing around with converting it out or whatever Pedro oh. said. Uh, All I said was uh, disable any kind of image processing that your TV may be doing yeah. because I've seen Convert this happen on this TV. <laughs> Converters are only five bucks. Amazon Basics. <laughs> Open Pavu Control and tap a button a few times and it'll be fixed. How about that? Uh, Pick up your remote that, that and set help. the yeah. uh, settings to default there. <laughs> See, there you go. 
Do you have three different <laughs> solutions for yeah. one little problem? <laughs> what you need to do is buy a tube TV with coaxial and mix. Nah, man. Hey, beautiful yeah. people. We got to get out of here. Thanks for showing up. We're going to roll some credits. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Oh, there they are. Yay! <laughs> this is a Linux Gamecast original series. Katana, with ben Stone, you're thinking with with big Pedro brains Mateus. right there, man. Sell your TV. Right. You, you have to own a TV. I, I technically do own a TV, but it's like a 13 year old plus <laughs> TV. I don't know if that counts anymore. Yes. <laughs> hey, I think it does. Uh, well, yeah. the, the, the one that Nathan, um, like, long term uh, lent me. Is um, that's Words. like ten years old ish. <laughs> well, they don't make plasma oh. TVs anymore, so mine's vintage. Yeah. Yeah. No. This this is not plasma. This is um, TN. It's a TN panel. Have, they still make TN panels. No. <laughs> yeah. Not that bad though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bye, Bye everyone. See you next week. <laughs>